facts here. Mothers do 88% of laundry in the U.S. Do you agree with that? No. No? Are you, do you think it's 100%? I don't know. Well, it is in our household. This equals 330 loads and 5,300 articles of clothing each year. There are about 2 billion moms in the world today and about 85.4 million in the United States. Now, moms change on average 2,000 diapers per year. And, and I read another really interesting fact. For moms, it takes them 2.5 seconds to change diapers. <laughs> I don't know how they got that average, but do you know how fast the men change? Uh, what? Two minutes. Oh, no. Two minutes. Okay. All right. Men change a diaper in 1.6 seconds. Much faster than other men. Much faster. Now, here, here's something else going to do. Moms in America receive gifts, right? That you weren't mom? Yeah, you weren't moms. That was really good. <laughs> anyway, moms in America receive gifts. New moms in Brazil give gifts. Oh. Do you like that one? Yeah. And in 2018, over $23 billion was spent on Mother's Day. I know some of you are going, uh-uh. <laughs> Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. A couple more facts coming up here in just a minute or two. But Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. It reads this way. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And there's just one more verse in that chapter, verse 20, that just caught my eye as I was reading. It's actually verse 8. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord. First, I just want to say this. Moms, you're awesome. The rest of you, say amen. <laughs> so a girl came home from playing with a friend a little later than expected. So her mother immediately said, Mary. Where have you been? It's late. Mary said, I was walking home with Julie when Julie dropped her doll and it broke. <coughs> oh, I see, said her mom. So you stopped to help Julie fix the doll? No, said Mary. We couldn't fix the doll, so I stayed and helped Julie cry. <laughs> it's called compassion. It's called compassion, which is probably received from her mom. Your parents are examples. So, things our mother taught us. My mother taught me how to appreciate a job well done. You're gonna kill each other, do it outside. <laughs> My mother taught me about religion. You better pray that's going to come out of the carbon. <laughs> My mother taught me logic because I said so. My mother taught me foresight. Make sure you wear clean underwear in case. There you go. Somebody got that. I guess somebody would catch that. My mother taught me about stamina. 
you'll sit there until all your spinach is gone. <laughs> My mother taught me about weather. This room of yours looks as if a tornado went through it. And my mother taught me about the circle of life. I brought you into this world. <laughs> Don't need fish to do it. My mother taught me about behavior modification. Stop acting like your father. <laughs> My mother taught me about anticipation. Just wait till I get home. And my mother taught me about receiving. You're gonna get it when I get home. My mother taught me how to become an adult. If you don't eat your vegetables, you'll never grow up. I had one of the most awesome parents that anyone could have. Setting an example for me in life. Just want to say one thing that my mom, the, the legacy my mom left, my mom and dad both left quite a legacy, but the one thing that I can always remember of my mom is prayer. Mom prayed. Didn't matter what she was doing, she was praying. And the thing I always think of was when she was doing the ironing. How many of you do ironing these days? <laughs> Not very many. <laughs> but my mom prayed. And I'm so grateful for that. The first two verses I read this morning are not suggestions. Now, if after all the things that I've said since then, you may not remember what those were, but honor your father and your mother. Okay. Children, obey your parents. Those are not suggestions from the Word of God. They are commands. First one that I read in Exodus, which is in the Old Testament, this command was given to Israel after they had been set free from being in bondage in Egypt. And this was instruction to them on how they should live. The promise was that they would live long on the earth. They would live long on the land that God was giving them. And that land was what we call the promised land. They, had, they were spending that time in the desert. And God had promised them a land that they were going to be able to enter in. And it says, if you obey this command, you will live long on the land that I am going to give you when you enter in and take that land. God wanted them to be able to enjoy what he was giving them. And the promise that he was giving them was that they were going to be able to live longer lives as a result of their obedience. To his word. Think with me for a moment. He didn't say how much longer it was going to be. So you can let your minds kind of wander here, but you know, I, I was sitting there as I'm reading the word, I'm going, okay, well, is it going to be 10% longer in my life? Somebody says, you don't have to worry about it. You're not going to love any longer. <laughs> but it wasn't going to be 15% longer if you're going to be 80 years old. You you might be living 88 years old. Whatever it is, we shouldn't need any incentive to honor our parents, to honor our mother. I heard one young man say recently to someone, my mom's mean. I wanted to respond, but I wasn't part of the conversation. So are you. But I didn't. And we often forget Exodus 20, verse 12, is not an option. God doesn't give it to us as an option. It is a commandment. So something you may not have heard that goes along with Exodus 20. And remember first the promise to honor your father and your mother and your days will be long. And the scripture I'm going to read to you here in just a moment, I don't know how many of you have ever heard this scripture. 
but it doesn't get read very often. Leviticus 29 tells us what happens if we don't honor our father and mother. And here it is. For everyone who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Now, if you need incentive, if you need incentive to honor your parents, you just got it. And just one more verse to go along with this, and I want to read this one here. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 18 to 21. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and who, when they have chastened him, will not heed them, then his father and his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of his city, to the gate of his city. And they shall say to the elders of the city, This son of ours is stubborn, rebellious, he will not obey our voice, he is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones, so you shall put away the evil from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. And I'm going to say one word to both of those scriptures. Ouch. Ouch. Obviously, the Bible doesn't take any of this lightly. Parents, you have a responsibility also. Your responsibility to honor your parents. And sometimes we forget to think only that our children should honor us. But your responsibility is to set an example for your children. When you honor your parents, it's an example you set for your children to honor you. As a result, you will have less of a chance of getting ulcers. <laughs> no honor shortens your life. Honor <clears throat> lengthens your life. Honoring is one of the Ten Commandments. And it's number five in there. I acknowledge obeying this commandment may not be easy for a lot of us. Like the boy that said my mom's mean. He may be point blank honest with that. Possibly you may have came from a broken home. Or possibly there's abuse in the home, which makes it difficult to honor. But the Bible doesn't say honor except. It tells us to honor. This one's not, you can't just say this one's not for me. This one of the Ten Commandments isn't for me. It's in there. And if you look at it like this, since this command comes from God, there must be a way to make it happen. No matter what your situation is, no matter how hard it is, we can honor our mothers. Also, since God has our best interest at heart, you've got to think of it like that also. If God has our best interest at heart, obedience must be in our best interest. You may not have thought of this, but even Jesus had to learn how to honor his parents. Jesus had to learn that as a concept also. As Jesus grew from a child to a young adult, as we think about it, <clears throat> Joseph and Mary were called his parents, and Jesus had to learn how to obey his parents. He was still under their authority. Joseph and Mary and Jesus take this trip up to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. And at this time, Jesus was 12 years old. It's, his, it's believed that was his age at the time. And Joseph and Mary were on their way back 
to their hometown of Nazareth. And all of a sudden, it hit them. Jesus isn't with them. Have any of you ever been on a trip? And you realize your kids aren't there? Or one of your kids is missing? Anyone? What happens to you? You begin to panic. You begin to, as the one word, freak out. <laughs> and you think about that also. Do you think Mary and Joseph were as any different than the rest of us? No. It hits them that Jesus isn't with them. So they head back to Jerusalem. They head back to, and the scripture tells us it's been about three days that they spent looking for Jesus. Their son. And we, when they traced things back, they figured, well, he must be at the temple. That's where we spent a lot of our time. So they go to the temple in Jerusalem. And when they got to the temple, he was there debating, discussing the scripture with the elders, with the leaders of the temple. They expressed their concern to Jesus, that Jesus wasn't with them on their way back to Nazareth. They can't tell me that, you can't tell me that they weren't just a little bit concerned, that he hadn't obeyed and hadn't followed with them back to the trip back. And I'm sure they were a little bit upset also. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 51, it says, after they got back, and I'm going to translate in modern day terms, it says, he obeyed his parents. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, my son, honor the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. None of us, not one of us, are perfect parents. Maybe, maybe there is one here. And I'd like to meet you. If... <laughs> yes, shake hands. None of us, though, are perfect parents, and none of us has have perfect parents. But we need to honor them anyway. So, there's that word honor again. What does honor mean? To honor someone is to give weight or to give a person or a position of respect in your life. We give them honor is an attitude of respect, attitude of being courteous, reverence. And there's something else that goes along with honor. Honor is an action word. You know, we don't think of, of it as that. But without action, that word is meaningless. The source of honor, though, is our Heavenly Father. It's God Himself. God is honored when people do things that is pleasing to Him. And when you honor your Heavenly Father, when you honor your mother and your father, that is pleasing to him. In like manner, parents are honored through obedience from their children. I want to read a, a passage of scripture, Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10, all the way to the end. I believe it's verse 31 also. It is truly a passage of honor for moms. So I want to read that. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She's like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion of her maidservants, or for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. 
She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed, clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law, the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household, does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. Amen.